Sissy. Yeah. And Francis of Assisi is an important figure to our work because he was a radical progressive activist who worked both within the system and outside the system to agitate. So I think that offers a really good model for us. And in San Francisco tonight, there are thousands of people who will sleep in crisis conditions on the street. How many people here live in a city or county where tonight thousands of people will live in crisis conditions on the street? Wow. How many people feel that the status quo of what their government doing is to scale to the size of the crisis? Like, so, so really not. So uh, today what I'm here to do is give a toolkit, like Matt Gonzalez was talking about earlier and also the mayor of SLO was talking about with, you know, we have protests turned into policy. I've really been working with my organization and with a multi-stakeholder group to design a code compliant framework for activating both public and private land for emergency shelter response. So Socrates is gonna help me out here. This is, you might not be able to see this that well, but San Francisco, Los Angeles, Oakland, San Jose, and Paradise, and Chico, and Sacramento. I, uh, we have allies throughout all of these places that are trying to activate land to deal with the crisis conditions that are happening tonight. And so once again, this is going to be a policy toolkit because there are some things that these places have in common. Next slide. Uh, in each of these places, there's a shelter shortage crisis. There's, an, um, there's immediate public health and safety needs tonight, right? There's ongoing service gaps anticipated for this year and next year in all of these places. They don't have a plan yet. Cities are trying to activate monies to create housing and shelter, and that's wonderful. And there's still gonna be a service gap tonight. Uh, and then we have immediate need for a code compliant framework to activate land. So public private partnerships, please next slide. What's wonderful is that what we've been activating for, uh, you know, in all these regions throughout California, the state of California building codes in December of last year, 2018, created this, and I have a copy of it right here if anyone wants to talk with me about it, uh, and it creates the emergency shelter codes and all the services you need to be co-compliant at the state level. Next slide. So Safe Organized Spaces is saying that there's a crisis tonight and we need a crisis response that is oftentimes off-grid, but you need a framework that meets these state codes and you also need a framework that makes it community integrated and so that it's not just plunking down a village, a transitional village in a neighborhood, it's understanding that it is within a neighborhood and within a community and with the city and there are best practices for how to do this and we've built that toolkit. Uh, so it meets California state codes, it operates in partnership with property owners, neighbors, village residents, and service providers in coordination with the county. And we have an interim permit, a license agreement, insurance, baseline health and safety standards, a built-in process for multi-stakeholder input and evaluation, and site-specific agreements. Next slide. So what are our requested actions? Uh, encourage California cities that have declared a shelter shortage crisis to activate these codes. Uh, and I have some uh, shelter ordinance uh, tools for that that are included in this slideshow. So we want to activate, could you go back actually? So we want to be able to activate those code, codes locally with an ordinance and then be able to develop land. Number two, encourage cities to create an interim permitting ordinance and protocol. And I have models for those as well included in this. And so we want to make sure that uh, people are doing the right steps at their city council and their county supervisors to be able to work in compliance to activate land. Uh, number three, uh, encourage cities to create incentives for leasing and subleasing vacant or underutilized private, private land. And so in Oakland, they just passed a vacancy tax. And so these empty lots and empty buildings, that money is going towards this kind of funding. And it gives incentives and disincentives to activate that land. Number four, there's gonna be statewide legislation, it's, it's SB 48, to make it so that if you want to put a shelter in your community, you can do that uh, by right, and we wanna make sure that it's informed by these kinds of principles. And the last uh, slide here, these are all the tools that I offer to you. So you might be overwhelmed at this point because this isn't your specific issue. 
But you, how many people here know someone in your area that's specifically working on activating land to deal with the shelter shortage crisis? It might not be you, but now you have this framework and toolkit that I happily share with you. And once again, we have regional allies all over the place. This gives you the sample drafts and the different ordinances that you can activate land. And there are also a couple folders for service providers because in Seattle, this has been a successful program and I've collected all of the models that, uh, of the paperwork for the intake forms, for the management plans, all those little details that make it really easy to build off of but are sometimes hard to start from scratch. You know what I mean? So we're building off of what exists already and my organization has been working on a budget for these off-grid transitional villages that meet state code. And that's also included in this packet here. And there actually is one more last slide. And you'll see that these are two shelters that we, emergency shelter cabins that we built in San Francisco and people lived in while they were in transition. I have this information here available. Is this something that's gonna go out to folks in an email? We will, we will be showing the video on our, um, on our website. Okay, so uh, if, there, if this is available, you can ask me, I have a card. And I'm happy to share this. Uh, and I saw all those hands go up for people who know people in different places. Please come up to me and give me your information or ask for mine because we are doing this statewide networking and I'm a pollinator for that kind of work. And I know that you know pollinators or maybe one yourself. So let's go ahead and actually meet the scale of the crisis for the people who are living on the streets. And once again, this isn't just for people who are displaced because of economic or behavioral challenges in their life. This is people being displaced in paradise and like where there are earthquakes. And I can't believe I still have time. I feel like I have this abundance of time. It's amazing. I'm looking for the person with the timer. Maybe she's not. I'm good. Okay. All right. We'll just uh, go ahead and contact me. And SOS is the crisis. What's the solution? SOS. Safe, organized spaces. SOS. SOS is the crisis. What's the solution? Safe, organized spaces. And, and the beauty of this is that the framework is broad enough that it creates, it hits all those needs that cities and counties have for the specifics of this needs to be code compliant. I need to make sure that there's a community process. I need to understand how the staffing is going to support the needs of the population that's here. It's scalable though. So it's very well designed in that way. And once again, people are already doing this kind of work. I'll, I'll alert you to this group in San Jose called San Jose Hope Village. Yep. And unfortunately, this group, very activist Catholic organization, decided to activate uh, underutilized public land in San Jose near the airport. And they did it, and they've been doing it for months at virtually no cost to the city. And the city's gonna shut it down. Yep. They're doing that right now, this weekend. Wow. And there are groups in Santa Cruz and Chico and Oakland that are doing this in different ways. There's all these iterations. Once again, what is this? This is the framework that we can use up and down the state to say at least it has to check all these boxes. And if it checks all these boxes, then you can do this in your community on public or private land. Why are they shutting it down? Why? I know the update to that. I'm supposed to have a So, uh, the FAA yeah, so we'll, we, there's, there's information about that. But uh, I'll just let you know a little bit more information. You know, we were able to activate an empty lot in San Francisco at the Impact Hub with one of our shelters for a year. And we've been doing this work in San Francisco to try to activate land because we see this as a crisis. And I see it as people say, well, what's the big resistance? And I see it as we're whittling down resistance and making it easier and easier to say yes and harder and harder to say no. Safe, organized spaces. Thank you.